In part one of this video, we spoke about the correct way to hold the banjo, the correct right hand technique and picking style, and then moved on to chords, chord shapes, and the correct left hand technique. In this second part of the video, we're going to discuss chord shapes further and use the attached chord sheets. We're going to talk about extended chords. Then we're going to move on to alternate fingering techniques and do some exercises involving chord shapes as well. At the end of the video, I'll just show a few other techniques which are quite frequently used in classic style banjo. By now you should have had a chance to practice the first 13 basic chords. You'll notice that they all fell between the 1st fret and the 5th fret. From the 2 one zero at the 1st, to the 5th position barre at the 5th. And of course this is not the whole story. If I for example put a 4-1-2 chord at the 1st position, I could also play it at, at the 2nd position, or the 3rd. In fact, I can play it all the way up the fingerboard. So in banjo music, you often see notation on the score which shows 10p412, which means at the 10th fret, which is this fret, 4 one, 2 Classic style published scores often have hints and suggestions on where to play the notes. Often there may be different or even better ways to play the piece but they can be a good starting place, and finding alternatives comes with practice and experience. I will use numbered chord shapes and positions quite a lot on this video. It's easier than trying to describe the individual notes. You can check the notation or the tablature which I've attached to download to ensure that your fingers are in the correct positions. Now that we have worked through the chord shapes, you must practice and be able to move effortlessly between the shapes at different positions on the fingerboard. That's the hard bit, but you will soon find it easy, or at least easier. Make sure that you keep the left hand, as I showed earlier, well away from the back of the neck, with the thumb acting as a clamp. When you downloaded the chord sheets, you'll notice there were 13 basic chords on one set and there were another set of sheets called extras. Let's work through those chords. The first chord on the extras sheet is the 4002, where the fourth finger goes at the third fret on the first string and the second finger goes at the second fret on the fourth string. In this chord, we're going to play all four strings. Now the way we do this is you hit the 4th string with your thumb, let it slide and rest onto the 3rd string, then it picks the 3rd string, now the 1st finger of the right hand picks the 2nd string, and the 2nd finger of the right hand picks the 1st string. But it's all done in one action. The second chord on the sheet is the first position 210 chord. This is exactly the same as a 421 chord but move further down the neck. The third chord on the sheet is the second position extended 431. Now this is quite a finger stretcher for you. Put your third finger across the first and second strings at the fourth fret. Reach across with your first finger on the third string at the second fret, and then reach down with your first finger at the sixth fret. So really you're playing your first with your sixth, the second with your third, and the first over on the third string. And you can lift your finger off, and you're then playing 3-3-1. Three, three, and the last chord on the 
chord sheet is the extended 412. Again, very similar to the last, but a lot easier. Put a standard 412 chord on at the first position and move the fourth finger up to the fourth fret instead of the third. And again, you can slide between the two. In the downloadable files attached to this video, there are some simple exercises to practice. The first one is alternate fingering for basic practice. It's an exercise just to get the right hand fingers used to alternating across the strings. Follow the notation or the tablature and take particular notice of which finger is used on each string. put a 4-1-2 chord on the 7th position and before we just played across the strings the top three strings the third second first using the thumb first second fingers keep the chord shape on and try thumb first that's on the third string and then thumb first thumb first on the second string and then second first now that is alternate fingering we are alternating thumb first thumb first then onto the second string thumb first thumb first second first second first Second first, second first, thumb first, thumb first, thumb. And when you're practicing your 13 chords up the fingerboard, If you use that technique, you'll start to get into the rhythm of using alternate fingering, which I've said previously is very, very important in classic style. So far, we've played the chord shapes across the strings. Third string, second string, first string. But you can play the chords by pinching the strings, pinching all three together. This is done again by the tips of the fingers and the side of the thumb, but all three together on the chord. Work up and down the fingerboard with the 13 chords, any position you like. And just practice pinching the chords. It's possible to use two fingers to pinch chords, which often happens when you're playing rapid pieces. Just use the second and the thumb. And what happens is the second finger comes across and hits the centre string. But we can worry about that one later. Another technique is the chord arpeggio. Now an arpeggio is when the three notes are played rapidly one after another. They're not played they're played now instead of picking quickly across the strings trying to trying to play the chord like that keep your fingers stiff keep your thumb stiff and just twist your hand. You move your thumb slightly on the third and because of the hand shape and your fingers which are locked together, 
The first and second fingers of your right hand actually pick the strings when you twist. So you can move the fingerboard playing chords just by twisting your hand. Now that we can play across a chord, and we can pinch a chord, and we can arpeggiate a chord, let's have a look at triplets. Triplets are musically three notes played in the time of two, but that isn't terribly clear. But think of twiddly. Now that's just playing across the strings. But twiddly is part of another musical phrase, twiddly dee. Now twiddly dee is used a lot in classic banjo solos. Now that you've learned the musical phrases twiddly and twiddly dee, we're now going to play bum twiddly bum bum. Again, another phrase that's quite often used in classic banjo, which is quite simply the thumb on the third string, boom, then a twiddly, and then a D, and now a pinch. shape up and down the neck or alternate chords. Just run through your chord shapes and try all those different fingering techniques. Oh, who said that? Twiddly dee, twiddly dum and bum twiddly bum bum aren't musical phrases? Surely not. Now a few final techniques and exercises. The first technique is known in classic banjo terms as the snap. Bluegrass players call it the pull-off. It is where a note is produced by playing and then quickly snapping off with a finger on the string. It can be used very effectively to make very fast runs of notes. is the slide. There are two types of slide. The first, the grace note slide. The first note is struck and then the finger slides up to where the second note is going to sound. The second one, both notes are struck. Another technique is known as the rasp where the fingers are explosively driven across the strings. I prefer to do the rasp with my hand backwards so that the fingers open across the strings. And there is also the thumb rasp where the thumb comes backwards and the nail drags across the strings. Both quite dramatic. A technique that I haven't used much in classic style playing is the hammer-on or the slur. Now it's used a lot by bluegrass players. What you do is you strike a note and hammer your fingertip firmly onto the string to produce the second note. There are more downloadable exercise sheets available with this video. And in part one of the video, there were tutor downloads. So you'll be able to read the tutors to find out more about the different techniques.